Welcome back everybody, my name is Malcolm Ash and this is Dark Souls 4. In Dark Souls 4 you play as a very cute orc and you sneak around trying not to get caught, but you get caught anyway. Full disclosure, I have played this room about 80 times. I have played this room so many times, and some of the times that I've played it, it's been a blatant, ah, why did I do that? Crap, that was a total mistake. And other times I've played it, it's been, what? How? Had, why did the enemy see me? How did the enemy see me? Uh, are there mechanics that I'm just not aware of? I was having such trouble with it that I decided to email Pon Pon Games, who created this game. I told them that, you know, I gave them praise for the game itself, and I said that I was really enjoying it, but I was having some trouble and I would like some help. And they gave me some tips for this room. Uh, but they said that the skeletons would not see me in their initial position, which means that there's no way that the skeletons should be able to detect your movement. They said that the scarecrows definitely move in vertical positions, or I'm sorry, not vertical, but backwards and forwards, and to move against their line of sight. Uh, what I have seen, that's true. They also said that if you stand on a different level that they shouldn't see you. Well, I shouldn't have stood behind that, that scarecrow even though he was facing away, I think. We already knew that if you're on a different floor, you shouldn't be uh, detected. I think we knew that, maybe. But one thing I did not know is that Smile Game Builder's eventing system cannot refer height, which means in this context that if I'm standing behind a wall, the enemy is actually going to be able to see me. So that's a big pain in the butt. Um, I played through several times trying to play by the rules of the game and the mechanics that it seems are intended to happen, and they don't work. Uh, the developer was kind enough to link to me a YouTube video that showed off the gameplay uh, from a Japanese player and they seemed to have no trouble at all getting through this room. Uh, they were discovered twice. They still made it through the room after discovering its mechanics of getting the rafts to float. So, because of what I have seen in that gameplay video, which was the Japanese version of the game, and this game, and what I've experienced myself, I think that something was broken in between uh, the versions of the game. I have constantly seen things that should not happen uh, as far as the stealth mechanics go. I am constantly spotted when I should not be by rights by any of the characters. Now that skeleton, he might have had a conical field of view and that makes sense to me, uh, but initially what got me like right there, that should not have happened. And I should not have died as many times as I have died playing this game. Now. I have also tried to do runs where I go into the room and do nothing but go right after the scarecrows and kill them, but the stealth mechanics break before I get to that point, and the arrangement of the enemies in the room changes so dramatically that it makes it impossible for me to get through the room anyway. So what you might be seeing and might be able to point out from watching this video is some recklessness. Uh, recklessness, some carelessness, some very blatant get out of their way, Ash. You, I can see you running right in front of them. But rest assured, I have played many, many times now, and I have done not that, and I have still gotten caught. So I think killing all of the uh, scarecrows would be ideal, that's for sure. And then staying away from the rest of the skeletons, which I could have done, and I guess chose not to there for some reason, because I was under pressure. Um, to me, that would be the best way to go, but then I have done that. I've killed, you know, two of the scarecrows without, without getting in trouble with the skeletons. They would move around, but I wouldn't be near enough them that I had to start attacking them. And then the skeletons would later find me anyway and alert everybody else in the room and the sneaking penalty is that's what the skeletons are there for so based on the advice that i read from the developer in their kind email 
and based on the gameplay video that I saw, I'm definitely going with the theory that something was broken in the stealth mechanics in the transition from English, uh, or from Japanese to English. So for that reason, my fellow game players, I don't think that there is a way for me to properly complete this. Uh, I was told the skeletons won't catch me at initial sight. I was told the scarecrows only travel along their path and to move vertically against their line of sight. Uh, nothing should have heard me or seen me there. And now the arrangement of the enemies in the room makes it impossible for me to advance again. I keep getting into these situations where it's close and it looks like I could do it. If only I could push the raft a little further. But then something like that happens and it doesn't seem possible at all. So for that reason, I think the only way for me to advance is to get into the project file itself that comes with the Healer Only Lives Twice DLC, which I have, and turn the stealth mechanics off entirely. If the game is not going to play properly by its own rules, then why should I? But that is something I actually don't want to do. I don't want to do that at all. And I'm thinking that it would be better to leave off this series, this video. I see all of the skeletons in this room this way. Ooh. They did not see me, but apparently the skeletons did. Hi. And he is going to be an absolute butt, I see. Get out of first person. Yeah, so I think the best thing to do is for me to leave the episode here. The uh, the Japanese game player, they had no trouble getting through this room, even after being discovered twice, and then discovering the mechanics of the room itself and having to push the rafts into place. Uh, this is Iron Will. This is one of the finest examples of a game made in Smile Game Builder. And it may not seem like much to uh, a casual or or triple A game player or whatever at first glance, but the value here is in the mechanics that are used. They are really, really good mechanics. If the stealth system was not broken, I have a feeling it was broken in the gargoyle area as well, but definitely broken in the room below this floor, I would say that it it definitely has a place in the top and maybe even despite that it should have a place in the top just because of its value to other developers um, the battle system is where it really shines the careful planning of attacking each monster uh, and not wasting any of your movements as you strategize uh, and defend yourself is done very well one of the things that disappoints me more than anything uh, is knowing that I'm going to have to give up and I'm not going to be able to see Lost Body and Weaver, the Knight and Cleric here on my team, in battle. Much like when you play uh, one of those really hard platformer games and then you get the ability to double jump, you might be overcome with a sense of relief. Something like, oh good, I can double jump now. I can get past all those platforms that I couldn't before. But what should also happen is... That feeling should be accompanied by a very heavy sense of dread. Uh, oh no, I can double jump now. That means the puzzles are going to rely on that mechanic and introduce further challenge. Uh, that's kind of the feeling I got when I got these two teammates on board and the extra health. I thought to myself, okay, cool. The, uh, the extra health is going to help me, and the teammates are going to help me in battle, and, and things are going to be easier. And then I realized very quickly, right after that, no, nothing is going to be easier. That's not the point of this. This introduces new dimensions to the challenge. And I was super excited to have them on my team and, and actually play with them, because I bet the strategies employed are awesome. Um, and the potential for deploying strategy. But I can't. I can't make it to the bottom room. I have to give up. 
I'm very sorry. I apologize. Uh, Iron Will is a great game. You should check it out anyway. And the Healer Only Lives Twice DLC contains the project file, so you can take a look at the stealth system yourself. Maybe you can adapt it to your game. Maybe you can change the mechanics around a little bit. Maybe you can make this into something that is flawless for your game idea. And if you can, then I think it's absolutely worth it. So, but I have to, I have to stop here. I'm going to leave off uh, here in the video and in this series, and I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.